At Hartford Public Schools, we care about one thing above all, the future of our kids. That's why we're dedicated to providing all students with the knowledge and skills needed in the new global culture. Hartford Public Schools is thriving. More student success stories, more world-class facilities, more university and corporate partnerships, more amazing talent coming and staying in Hartford. This is how education is supposed to work. Welcome to Hartford Public Schools, where the future is present. Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Welcome to another segment of Grassroots Business Journal with your host, Paul Willis, where small business talk is linked to social media. Today, as our guest, we have Michael Duffany from the Brookshire Bank, the business, he's a business banking officer. Yes. Michael, have, glad well, to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Excellent. And uh, Michael's specialty is small business loans. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, sure. uh, what you've been doing, and what brought you to where you are at Brookshire Bank. Yeah, my background is I grew up in a small business, so I, I know how those run, so it's perfect that I got into this. I had a retail background and then 10, 10, 12 years ago, I got into banking. Uh, worked for some larger banks, uh, went to a smaller bank, and now I'm at Berkshire Bank, which is uh, right where I think we need to be and where I need to be. It's a great institution. Okay. Now, you said you had a business before. Yes. Can you explain a little bit about that? Uh, my father had a uh, small business. He ran a 7-Eleven and uh, uh, another business in Waterbury, so I grew up in that business. And then I also do uh, private lesson coachings on the side where I do baseball. So. I help out with the teenagers, and it's a, it's a great give back to the community, and I do it on the side as well. So, okay, it's interesting. But you know, my passion is uh, small business, and my background's commercial lending. Okay, mm -hmm. now I know a lot of our uh, of, of the audience um, may be small business owners sure. or maybe thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, what have you found as to be Maybe an issue sure. of, of, of a person trying to start a small business and getting involved. Well, a couple of things, and one is a really good business plan and being a hey, what we talked about, not just a mission statement, but a vision statement. You'd have to be able to describe your business to me or somebody you're pitching to within a sentence or two. And if you can't do that, they need to go back and figure out what it is that you need to do. A lot of people try and uh, start business with the next big idea. I don't think that's what most business succeeds on, they find a niche and do it better than somebody else. That's my advice. The other thing is, is I have a little term, I call it the pizza roll. Okay. Yeah, people don't really understand how it is to make a profit. So let's just say you're gonna open up a pizza business. How many pizzas are you gonna make, have to make in order to make your revenues and pay your expenses? Okay. Most people don't even do that simple math. And then the other, the other thing about the pizza roll, it's not realistic. In other words, if you're going to open up tomorrow and in order to make your expenses, you have to be the number one pizza uh, seller in Hartford day one. Okay. It's not realistic. So when I see business plans, it's nice to see them fla flashy graphs and things of that nature, but they have to be uh, they have to be in reality. They have to make sense. Okay. Okay. So I've seen 50 page uh, business plans that are no good and I've seen three or four ones that are excellent, three or four pages. Now. What they've been always, <clears throat> a lot of the guests I've had on the program mm. here have always, I mean, that seems like it's the overriding mm. um, uh, factor that a small business needs to have, sure. and that is the business plan. Sure. How important is the plan? It's very important. for for If you're coming to get business, I'm going to ask you if you're a new business, I need a business plan. You have to pitch to me so I could pitch it uh, to my underwriters and people that, you know, the bank, so we could... Here's the vision statement, and, and here's how they're going to make their, mo their money in a realistic way. Um, obviously, most loans are you know, usually from two to five year terms to 20 year terms. We have to know that over that time that you're going to be able to debt service, what we call debt service, the, 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 the obligation. And that's in your business plan. That's in your mission statement, and more importantly, in your vision statement. Okay. Yeah. Now, 
you mentioned some key words inside yeah. there, and which is the underwriting. Sure. Uh, through your relationships with underwriters, where do they see as the um, uh, points that need to be uh, more developed? Yeah. Or areas that the business has to focus in. Well, on? that's a great question because a lot of times bankers use all these fancy terms, <clears throat> and one of the fancy terms we heard is debt service coverage, which is a ratio. But it's a very simple ratio. It's you know 1.2 times debt service coverage, which is usually the norm throughout the industry. Which is a very simple term for you know for a thousand dollars of expenses, you need twelve hundred dollars in income. So if you meet that minimum 1.2 times debt service coverage, and you could prove that to the bank, or you have a history of that, that's the starting point. And then the other thing is having good credit, and obviously, if you're going to do a commercial building, you know, loan to value, okay. and those are usually the sticking points. So, my advice to somebody in the business plan: first and foremost, keep make sure you have a good credit score, and do whatever it takes to maintain that. And if you don't, find ways to build it. There's numerous websites out there to tell you how to increase it and how how it would decrease. The second thing is is that if you don't know how to write a business plan, you could go to Score or your local chamber, and there's. Uh, Get yourself a mentor. I mean, that's probably one of the biggest things. I Find a mentor and find somebody who's a mentor in your industry because a lot of times people think an industry is something that's not. Okay. And I could give you a good example of that. Go ahead. I had an individual that was uh, did concrete and wanted to get out of that business and bought a pizza place. Well, after he bought the pizza place, he realized that's nothing, that he didn't want to do that for a living. Okay. You know, if you really want to know what you want to do for a living, find a mentor and ask him to spend a day or just tell him what it is a day in the life of. It may not be what your skill sets are. So have you seen from, from a person wanting to get into a small business, yeah. uh, would you say that you have to have come in there with a knowledge base sure. about that business? Sure. Or can you just come into a business um, it's just kind, cold? It's kind, of, just, it's kind of both. But here's the big mistake that most business ma owners make. They're an expert at what they do, but they don't know how to manage people or a business. And that's usually what makes you fall down. You know, the mechanic that's in the, uh, in the back room doing all the, uh, uh, doing the cars, and his guys are standing around, or he's not getting new business, he's a technical expert, but he's not a business owner. And a lot of times, like you and I were talking about before, is it's great to have a business, but you also got to grow the business. And if you talk to any CEO or any president of any company, a lot of times he's out building relationships and getting the next deal. And like we talked about, if you're not growing, you're dying. Okay. And so a lot of times you're a great chef, but you're not a great business person. So all your profits are walking out the front door because you're not keeping, you know, the cost in line. Okay. Yeah. So, so my advice is, is that figure out what you love to do and then you'll make money at it. How successful have you been yeah. with maybe directing? Let's yeah. say you have some, a, a small business owner, mm -hmm. he's had some problems sure. or, is, or you have somebody who's come up to you and he's thinking about having the business. Mm -hmm. Have you directed people into having a mentor and, and, and having that person that can really take them through? Right, because you know I'm an advocate for my customers, don't get me wrong, but when I'm doing a loan, I also can't tell you how to run your business. So I think that, and I also have a mentor. I've, I've dealt with a lot of individuals that I've been around in my life professionally and personally to help you get to the next level because we all have to grow. It's not just professionally, but personally. And let's face it, any business that you're in, you're in the trust build business, and your reputational power means everything, and it's your business card. That's where you have to start with first. You know, Make okay. sure that you have a great reputation and build relationships, and never not turn down a meeting or something. You never know what, what it could lead into. Uh, but first and foremost, if you get somebody like a SCORE, retired businessman, and I've met some of these guys, they're phenomenal, and women, uh, they could really direct you because they've been doing it for a long time, and they, they've seen it. Okay. And as much as all we have is this uh, business is business. I don't care, oh, it's the new business. It's still business. It hasn't changed in thousands of years. You got to be able to meet your expenses, pay your bills, and, and have some left over. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, where do you see the small business um, arena going in, in the next 
10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, where, where do you see that moving within your business, within, from, from your I, perspective? Actually, we want to do a lot of uh, SBA loans, but w- w- the biggest thing that I've seen is the ones that are truly successful is they find a niche. They find a business that somebody may be doing, but not doing that this particular end of it. And I spoke to several business owners uh, just recently that they got into that niche. You know, I was talking to a lighting service guy, and he's doing a specific niche that really nobody else was uh, was doing, and he's doing forty three million dollars now. And he wow. and, and obviously it started at something. But you and I keep talking about this. Is um, let's go back to Intel. You know, when Intel started, they were just making a small little piece for IBM. So get yourself started. Uh, uh, start slow and and then find out what's, do it better than somebody else. People pay more money to, for the experts. Become an expert in your field. You do that and then it's not just on price point because if you do your business on price point alone, there's always a guy that's gonna do it cheaper. Okay. But there's not always a guy that can do it better. Okay. You mentioned something. Yeah. And that is that, um, what could make your business mm-hmm. from what you're doing? Mm-hmm. What would make your job easy mm-hmm. for that small business owner? History. Uh, for me personally, I've got to have history. We like to have three years tax return. So start your business. You know, go out and uh, get a name certification at the local, you know, just get your name and start the business so we have history of income. And you don't have to do this elaborate LLC and incorporated. Start slow, give us a history. Uh, banks like to see history. We need history. And and a lot of people say, well, I, wanna, I wanna quit my job and start a business. Well, that's all well and good, but if it's a brand new business and the income you used to have, which we're gonna base the loan on, you're not gonna have anymore, it's gonna be more difficult to get a loan if you don't have some kind of history. And I tell a lot of people that have that dream, keep your day job and work on it at night. And before you know it, you know, you could you know stop doing that. And I can't tell you how many clients I've had that mm-hmm. stop doing their day job and their business takes off. Okay. Yeah. Now, you, 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 again, you're mentioning some nice material here. Yeah. Now, some people have said you've got to have the mindset sure. to be that small business owner. Right. How important is that? It is, but the mindset is you have to love what you do. And I think what a lot of people do is uh, they approach it, I want to make as much money as possible. Great. I think that's a great, but it's got to be something else. It's got to be something else. And you got to, I keep going back to the entrepreneur is the person that is, uh, wants to be an expert and has passion. I mean, most of the books you read, they'll tell you to be passionate about that. And the other thing is, is once you start getting into businesses, I can't tell you how many other businesses diversify after that because they, they like what they're doing, but they also find something else that interests them. And now they have a couple, three, four, five businesses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, where have, um, where are, again, maybe identify what some of the, uh, the, the faults that a small business owner will do mm-hmm. in trying to uh, expand his, um, in, in either getting a loan, et cetera? Getting themselves into too much debt. I'll give you a good example, uh, landscapers. Uh, one of the landscapers I had decided to go out and buy all new equipment. Well, you don't really need all new equipment. And the bottom line is the bottom line. Let's not forget you're in business to make money. It's not your revenues, it's what you get to keep afterwards. So if you could keep your expenses low and drive your revenues, it's all about debt services. You could be a more profitable business making less money. You could make $50,000 and have more of a profit than a guy that's generate $100,000. So uh, keep the debt low and that way you're more flexible and you could turn on a dime. And maybe we can just uh, end with this segment as to um, what is the atmosphere within the banking industry Mm -hmm. from their lending practices as opposed to other alternative practices? Well, the banking industry obviously is the uh, tax return and history and things of that nature. But it's a it, what it is is you're going with an institution that's going to help you grow, and we have the expertise as you grow to get you to different levels in the bank. Uh, other industries, when you go out and you just get somebody who invests in your company, you're not sure how much they want to own. We don't want to own your company. We just want to help you grow. So you have to decide, you know, where your funding coming from and how much control you want to give up. Okay, that yeah. sounds good, there. Well. Michael, it's been an, uh, a pleasure having you on the program here Great. today. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. And we'll, uh, we'll talk again. Sure. We'll talk again. Uh, Michael Daphne. Daphne. Daphne, I'm sure. sorry. From the Brookshire Bank. Sure. Uh, specializing in uh, small business loans. He's the uh, business banking officer. So again, 
give them a call. Mm. He's wide open for uh, discussions sure. and to uh, really help your business grow. Thank you. Uh, having, uh, it's been great having you on the program. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. You've been listening to the Grassroots Business Journal. I'm your host, Paul Willis. Again, uh, talking small business and linking it to the social media. If you have any calls or issues that you want to, please get in touch with me at either 860-490-8856 or my email address, pcwillis at gmail.com. Until we meet again, have a good day.